Welcome to our Remote Access Security Module. Remote Access Service was originally developed for dial-up modems so that road warriors or individuals working from home could dial into the network to access resources, and this was accomplished using a modem bank or a collection of modems. This would reduce the cost of dedicated leased lines by simply using existing telephone lines, and this provided flexibility for your remote workers. Your remote user would use their home computer and their dial-up modem and phone line to connect to the bank of modems located at your organization, would then authenticate using the remote access server, and once authenticated would be provided access to your corporate LAN so that they could access necessary resources. There are several different VPN and tunneling protocols that can be used for remote access. Remote Access Services, or RAS, Dial-Up with RAS, point-to-point -point protocol, which is an older dial-up remote protocol. We have several different types of authentication protocols that can be used to ensure that an individual is who they claim to be, PAP, CHAP, and EAP. And some of the newer VPN tunneling protocols, such as PPTP, point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, L2TP, layer two tunneling protocol with IPsec, and SSL, TLS, SSTP, or Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol. There are several different authentication protocols which are used with virtual private networks. Two of the most common protocols used are Microsoft CHAP version 2 and Extensible Authentication Protocol, or EAP. There are a few different security mechanisms that were used with dial-up networking to provide where you are geolocation authentication. Callback was a location verification. When an individual wanted to connect to the network, they would provide their credentials and the access server would then hang up on them and call them back at a pre-configured number. This way they knew they were dialing a specific number that was provided by that user. This is not very flexible. If the user leaves from that phone number or that location, you will not be able to contact them back and they will not be able to establish a connection. And you also do not really know who resides at that number. Caller ID service was more flexible. You would provide a list of acceptable numbers and the caller ID verification would be made when the individual dialed in to verify that it was on the approved list of persons that could connect. The individual would connect using their phone line and point-to-point -point protocol, and then the verification would occur at your remote access server, and as long as the verification was successful, the individual would receive access to the corporate LAN. Point-to-point -point protocol, or PPP, is an obsolete protocol that is no longer frequently used. It allowed data to be encapsulated over a serial line for dial-up modem connectivity. It can encapsulate older protocols that cannot route through the internet, but can also work point to point. War dialing was a common type of attack where individuals would dial sequential numbers until they found a modem and then would attempt to attack that system. There are several different methods that can be used to authenticate a user, including PAP, CHAP, and EAP. Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol is another way to remotely connect to and control a Windows PC. Remote Desktop Protocol commonly uses port 3389 by default, but it is possible to change this port so that it uses a different port. Secure Shell Technology, or SSH, uses port 22 to create a tunnel to remotely control a system, but this is not a VPN connection. It is a way of providing remote secure terminal sessions, such as a command prompt, providing secure terminal access to a remote system, and you should not use Telnet or Unix R utilities. Telnet is not secure because it transmits the user's password in clear text, and if there is an attacker sniffing on the network, the attacker would be able to capture that password. Secure Shell also supports encrypted file transfer through SFTP or Secure File Transfer Protocol. For the CISSP examination, you should remember that Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol uses port 3389 by default and can be used to control a Windows PC. You should remember that Secure Shell is more secure than Telnet, and the reason we do not use Telnet is because it transmits the user's credentials in clear text. This concludes our Remote Access Security module. Thank you for watching.